Chapter 1. How to Get Started Developing the Idea of Your Podcast You're here and you're ready to podcast. I bet you want to just jump in and start. The first thing you need to consider before even buying equipment is, what's your podcast going to be about? There are a lot of people who want to do a podcast but don't have a particular focus or idea. But who wouldn't want to be a radio host and talk away and be known for their opinion? This is an appealing vision, but this perspective has a tendency to create subpar shows without a great point, which are just a set of banter that isn't terribly enjoyable to listen to. So, when starting down the path to podcasting, there are a number of things that will be worth considering. The best idea for a new podcast is to start out with a center. This center is the key to the whole picture, and the center for almost all podcasts is the audience. The audience is made up of all the people that you want to attract to your show. They are the ones that will surround you and fuel you. So, consider what they want. Often, people aren't looking for unique products that focus on a single niche. They aren't looking for a new general tech show or another movie review show that touches every single film in the theaters. There needs to be something unique to your podcast that no one else can fill. Here are some ideas for finding that special something. Consider your interests. Everyone has subjects or hobbies that they enjoy, and it's likely that there are others who love the subject just as much as you do. So, what are your loves? Is it books? If so, then do a book review or book club show. Are you a mean golfer? Then talk about either golf on television or the latest developments or even your own tips for the new golfer. Acknowledge your expertise. Another consideration to take when choosing a show is to ask yourself, what are you an expert in? By having expertise in something, then you would have the opportunity to express that expertise to a larger audience and to further your own expertise by researching deeper into your subject. Some of the best shows are based around niche experts who express their interests passionately through the airwaves. Now, make sure that you separate expertise from opinion. All of us are opinionated about something, but if you can mix that opinion with either a unique angle or bent, as some call it, this angle brings new light to your opinion and makes it valuable. However, your opinion shouldn't be just it. Otherwise, you're just another clanging gong who wants to be noticed. Your expertise should give value to your audience and make them consider things that otherwise might be forgotten. See what others are doing and do what they're not. This is always a great way to find a unique niche. Here's a good example. There are a lot of homeschool podcasts out there hosted by homeschool parents. But what about a homeschool podcast hosted by a homeschool graduate? That's what originally inspired the podcast Confessions of a Homeschool Graduate. It's the basic idea of what Wired editor Chris Anderson called the long tail. To explain this idea, I need you to imagine a long tail which represents the market for your product and where the process is determined by demand and desire. To explain this, I will use the classic example of tech podcasts. At the top are shows like This Week in Tech and Techzilla. These shows are basic tech shows that touch on just a little bit of everything. There are a lot of general tech shows out there competing to be number one but none of them can beat the original This Week in Tech. As you search further, you find smaller niche shows like The Mac Cast or Maximum PC. There are fewer shows in these categories, but it's still fairly wide. If you continue further down the tail, you'll find unique shows dedicated to PC gaming or Mac accessories. Eventually, you get down to shows that are dedicated to just one computer type or how to do one specific thing. This kind of focus is great for business and for podcasts, so it's worth looking into what has been done already. By choosing something that hasn't been done, then you won't have any competition and will have impact longer. But if you choose the path of a very small niche, you need to ask yourself, is there enough content? One mistake that podcasters could make is choosing a subject that doesn't have enough content to support its model. Podcasting for Dummies author T. Morris's best example for this was a show centered around the intricacies of reattaching lost buttons onto ladies' blouses. 
Obviously, this idea is very limited and probably could only last one to three episodes. Yep, this is certainly a great concept for a segment or a small part of a larger show. So, consider your niches carefully. But whatever niche you choose, take advantage of it and use it effectively. Who's hosting? This may seem like a silly question, but it's still one that we should engage. Who's hosting the show? The obvious answer is yourself, but is there anyone else? Many shows can be done with only one person. The Quick and Dirty Tips Network uses the solo method to emphasize the expertise of their host. Also, the goal of each episode is to inform you. What if more than one opinion is required for your product? This is where multiple hosts come in. The natural conversation between experts makes listening to the opinions of others a lot more interesting. Here, one man express his opinion sounds like a lecture. The banter and conversation that comes with multiple hosts can make a show infinitely more entertaining. It's also easier to produce since conversation flows more naturally than the lecture. It's also pleasant to listen to. Other methods that podcasters need to consider are the panel style and the interview. Panels require a number of voices, which are either collected in one place or call in over the Internet and are recorded. Panels are great since they bring in a number of experts who focus their perspectives on specific subjects. These panels can be weekly conversations about something unique or a one-time gathering of experts. This kind of podcast requires a lot more microphones and or computers, but it is a great way to explore subjects in depth. Interviews are something that all of us would love to do. Having the chance to talk to experts about their subject, learn what we can, and share that conversation with the world. This method requires being able to connect up with the experts, being able to record them on the fly, and keep things simple. Is your content free-flowing or written down? Most podcasts are based on the conversational abilities of the hosts. If they know their subject, then all they need to create more content is their memory and some notes. However, some podcasts can just be a man reading a script. The classic example of this is the podcast Escape Pod. Each episode is simply a short story read aloud by either the host or a voice actor. What makes this content great is that you can produce it by simply reading a story and releasing. It won't require any segments or single thoughts. Of course, you will have to have the script ready, but as long as it's ready, then you'll be ready as well. How long is each episode? Podcasts come in many lengths, from a two-minute speech to a two-hour-long ramble. We all know that most shows will have shorter episodes and longer episodes, but we need to choose our goals for each episode. The length of the episode often relies on the content. So, let's say you want to make a really short show. How do you do that? A great model to follow for this type of show is Merriam-Webster's Word of the Day. Their show is a short summary of information about a word. Its shortness makes it fun to listen to quickly and apply to your life. It also gives you the content up front, no fuss or muss. On the other side are shows like This Week in Tech or Twit for short, this show is news-based and has to cover this news in a limited time period. Often the news stories are based around things that are centered in the opinion of others. So, having the opportunity to express these opinions will take time. And that's where the hour-long shows come from. Also, shows that are based around the method used by talk show hosts also need that time to express multiple opinions and explore the many angles to the story. Conclusion now you have an idea of the content you want to create. You know what your goals for each episode are, how long you want them to be, and even whether you want a co-host. You should know what you want and your goals. But how should you progress forward? The easiest way is to make a plan for the future. Come up with future goals and plans. Also, figure out how often you want to release content and how much effort you want to put in each episode. Don't worry about how long it takes up front. The first episode is always the hardest. As you get used to creating episodes on a repetitive basis, you'll also find it easier to create the episodes and enjoy it more. But now that you've planned all this out, it's time to figure out how to do it.